guys, welcome back to Medical Coding with Blue. Today's episode is all about what I wish all medical coding programs taught. If you are brand new to my channel, welcome. I am Blue, I'm a medical coder. Okay guys, the road to becoming a medical coder and taking our certification exams, whether you are sitting for a certification through the American Health Information Management Association or the American Academy of Professional Coders is different. There is no prerequisite for the main medical coding certifications. Now, the specialty ones, that's a different thing. Um, but as far as the CCS, the Certified Coding Specialist, the gold standard of medical coding credentials, the CCA, the Certified Coding Associate, or the CCSP, the Certified Coding Specialist Physician-Based, all offered with the American Health Information Management Association, or the CPC, uh, offered with the American Academy of Professional Coders. These are the four main ones that employers look for. And there is no prerequisite uh, for these, these courses. You just have to have a high school diploma or a GED. And so there's no formal training that's required. There used to be with AHIMA, you had to have a certain thing you met with uh, to, in order to take the CCS, but now they've since lifted uh, that requirement. Now, I, I really do wish there was a little bit more standardization as far as like the program goes, because then we wouldn't run into programs who say, well, you don't have to take medical terminology. You can just wing it along the way. Trust me, there's, there's programs out there that are like that. Uh, medical co medical terminology and uh, anatomy should and physiology should be a core <laughs> of all medical coding programs, but unfortunately it is not. And sometimes when people study on their own, of course, they study different things. Um, if they're going to a college uh, program, and sometimes a college will come up with their own um, curriculum for learning medical coding, and it's not like they say you can sit for a HEMA or AAPC credentials, and maybe they'll throw on some extra courses that you might think may not make sense, but sometimes they make sense. So. Here are the three courses that I wish were core uh, in all medical coding programs. Of course, along with just your standard, you know, the coding and then the medical terminology and anatomy and pathophysiology, you know, all of those. A aside from that, these are the three that I wish were also included in all medical coding programs. Or if you are studying on your own, something that you can think about uh, adding on to your studies, all right? Because it's not about just teaching the person to open up the book and find a code. We have to be able to rationalize why we are choosing these codes. Why did we get this evaluation and management level? Why did we choose this procedure code? Why did we get this uh, diagnosis code? We have to be able to understand why. It's not just, well, that's what the documentation says. Did we reason it out? So again, uh, there's it's a lot more <laughs> to being a medical coder. It is about being an effective communicator, which that's the number one thing that uh, I would recommend is professional communication class. Because it is so important to be able to know how to communicate effectively with alpha personalities. These providers are all alpha personalities. Your um, medical coding auditors, your supervisors, again, alpha personalities, because you have to be able to communicate effectively. It's not about just you're a new medical coder and if they're telling you that you're wrong, okay, you're just gonna accept that you're wrong. They need to be able to explain why. You know, a good auditor, a good medical coder that's a trainer will explain why a new medical coder is wrong. Uh, but if a, if a new medical coder doesn't have the training in professional communication, they may just go along to get along. Well, in medical coding, you cannot do that. Even in medical billing, you can't go along to get along because there are rules that can be broken if you do that. And so that's why teaching people, teaching medical coders specifically to be able to communicate effectively is huge. And that professional communication is largely a big part of being an effective medical coder uh, because we are not just these people who sit behind the scenes. What we do affects the patients, it affects the providers, it affects whole facilities, it affects a lot of people. It's a domino effect. And if the coder is, is already not trained uh, specifically in, in coding, like as far as like the detailed training, 
and then they have poor communication skills, you're setting the coder up to fail. And so if the coder is not taught that it is very important to learn professional communication as far as speech and, and making your point clear and not starting your conversations with, I'm sorry, I need you, I need to ask you a question. No, because again, our words have a lot of weight. You can't just apologize just to apologize. It doesn't make you look demure. It doesn't make you look meek. It, all it does is just set you up to be taken advantage of because you are showing weakness and you can't do that, especially in this kind of field. You have to be an advocate for those patients that their documentation looks really good because they got to be able to take that documentation wherever they go. And you have to be able to capture all of those diagnoses and all of those procedures for the provider and for the patient. So that, that would be the number one thing that if I could have my wish list of, of perfect classes uh, that could be to train medical coders, communi professional communication would be the number one. Um, stress management is number two. <laughs> stress management. Medical coders tend to get overwhelmed uh, it, it, being brand new or even being a veteran coder, you can get overwhelmed and you can get stressed out. If you do not learn stress management techniques, you can get stressed out, burnt out very quickly. Now, this can lead to a path of just no return. If you get so stressed out with it that you just run from it and you don't want to deal with it anymore then you would have wasted all of that time, all of that education and that training and all the hours of study if you don't learn how to manage your stress. And especially, again, when you're brand new, it's, it's a new world out there, aside from these books, because the books only get you so far. It, the books will get you started, but the real world is completely different um, as far as like the coding goes. It, it gets these providers, they come in with different attitudes some days. Some days you will find providers have great documentation and everything's right on the money and they have all of the detail that you need and everything looks perfect and you're so excited and this is like, yes, yes, finally. And then the next day they'll come in and they'll just be like, I'm just going to document whatever and if I have to get a query, I don't care, you know, and they'll have those kind of days because again, they have to deal with their own families, they have to deal with their own, you know, requirements for their profession, being a doctor, being a PA, being a nurse practitioner, any of those things. And they have to deal with those stressors. And so sometimes the coding and their documentation just falls to the wayside. So again, if you've been taught professional communication, they would know, hey, this is my teammate. And they're, they're here to work with me and support me and we're going to get through this together. It's not one more person coming after me with a red pen, right? To stress me out <laughs> because the coder knows how to manage their own stress. And when you learn how to manage your own stress, it gets easier to be able to spot when other people are getting stressed out. So then you can manage how you communicate with those people as well. And it's about going that extra step and going that extra step. Trust me. It can mean the world of difference uh, when you're building these relationships with your providers and you're trying to build trust, right? Because you start to become more in tune with the people around you. And when you are able to spot people that are stressed out and you're able to change and, and pivot uh, your communication style, that's going to make you more effective. And again, if you teach medical coders this, if you teach them stress management techniques, whether it is okay, I've got to meditate for a couple of minutes, I've got to get centered and I've got to get myself back on track. Or if they're doing things like yoga or walking or anything like that, um, some kind of physical activity that will help them with manage their stress, it's gonna make them a lot more balanced and able to focus on what they have to do in their task. Because again, medical coders can start to take things very personally. And then if their audits start to go bad, then all of a sudden it's just like a huge snowball. So again, getting into those good habits of stress management, it can go a long way. So whether your program does it or not, uh, whether you are studying by yourself, 
you can always add this on as something else that you are just kind of trying to learn about. You know, you don't have to spend a whole, uh, you know, eight hours there <laughs> watching videos on stress management. You can just do this a little bit at a time. And it's just learning little things. And, you know, I've, I've learned techniques as far as like, okay, sometimes when I feel myself getting upset, um, I know that there are times when I have to kind of stop and, and take a second and just breathe for a minute and then recognize how I'm feeling, acknowledge it, and then move on from it. So it, it's not as easy as I'm trying to say it is <laughs> because it's not. It's something that you have to learn to do. These are coping mechanisms and coping skills to manage the stress. It will make you more effective um, if you are able to do this, you know, but again, I know it's adding on something else when you already have a lot to do But trust me if you're if you're able to start incorporating these things It will help you to manage this stress because if you're in the process of learning medical coding, it's a lot <laughs> And you're gonna have to learn to manage that stress you have to learn to manage your time you have to be more disciplined and again if you learn to professionally communicate and if you learn to um, professionally communicate in that you're able to even ask for the things that you need, right? Because uh, professional communication doesn't only just extend to the professional arena, it can also extend to your own personal life. Because the more that you learn how to effectively communicate with, with others that you work with, the more that you can effectively communicate with the people that are around you, right? Um, you can start to ask, Hey, I need this time to study. I need one hour of study time. I just need to be left alone for one hour so that I can uh, I can study this and then I'll get back to you. Or, you know, I can spend time with you. I can spend time with my family. I can balance these things. Again, professional communication and stress management. And spending time with your loved ones so that they don't feel neglected while you're learning or while you're starting a new job. Um, so that way... You know, again, they're part of the process and they won't they won't hate <laughs> that you are doing this and that you're trying to learn this. And you will find that, you know, you could potentially have more support, you know. So that is a, a side benefit of learning those stress management uh, techniques and professional communication. Because stress management, you're not going to be snapping at everybody, right? Because you're going to know how to manage your stress. There's a lot of videos on YouTube um, that talk about this and there's a tons of TikTok videos as well um, that talk about like stress management just like really quick really quick that you can actually incorporate into your daily life and it'll kind of help you to manage those things that's my advice anyway and the last one the last one is probably the most important as well public speaking a lot of people will get into a full-on panic when they find out that they have to, you know, give a class or talk to a provider, you know, it's that public speaking or, you know, talking in front of a, a interview panel, that's the thing. They start to panic and you kind of spiral out of control because you, you get really nervous public speaking. It's something that you have to work on and it is a little bit at a time. It is not something that you're going to learn and be comfortable with overnight. But the more that you work on your public speaking and being out there and being clear with what you're trying to say and learning how to effectively say what you want to say, uh, it's, it's going to go a long way into building your own confidence. And all of these three things, professional communication, stress management techniques, and public speaking goes a long way to building your confidence. Because a confident person who can deliver their, whatever their idea is, or whatever they're thinking, if they're able to communicate that with a lot of people, or even with just one person, it, that person is more confident than the other person who is very shy, and who, who oh no, no, I'm, I, I can't, I can't. Yes, you can. Everybody has this ability. You have to get yourself out of the way in order to be released so that you can do and reach your full and highest potential. Everybody has the ability to reach a higher level. But what happens is a lot of people stop themselves from growing because they have a set thing in their head. 
I am a shy person. Oh no, I could never do that. When in actuality, that's just how you feel. You don't ever allow yourself to get into that, to that position of reaching a higher level because you want to keep yourself lower and you want to keep yourself where I don't do that. Oh no. Oh, I could never when yes, you can. There's so much that you can give to others. If you allow yourself to do that, if you learn to speak up for yourself, if you learn that you can be assertive and not be rude and not be mean and not act like, Oh, Oh, you're better. If you learn how to professionally communicate, manage that stress and publicly speak again, you're going to be a lot more confident in what you do. And when you exude that confidence, you're going to be a lot more um, receptive to a lot of other things that's going to get you to a higher level. Uh, again, when you start learning how to manage your stress, you're going to see other people when they start to get stressed out because you have to be in tune with how you feel and your triggers, right? So then seeing that in others, then you can say, oh, I know that person's getting upset. Okay, let me change how I'm, how I'm speaking to them or you know, they seem to be getting frustrated. Okay, so let me think of an, another way to say this. You know, again, it's going to help you uh, in your journey and in your quest to become a high caliber, well-rounded medical coder. Because we are not just people who select codes. We have to be able to communicate. That is number one, first and foremost. And a lot of schools do not talk about that. They talk about the shiny, pretty things, the things that you want to hear because they want to reel you in because if they actually mentioned how hard this field is and the work that we have to do in order to get good as far as like get good to be a good medical coder, to um, be able to communicate with these providers. If they mentioned that, a lot of people would be running for the hills. They would never uh, be able to recruit people into this, but they're going to say all those good things. And just because you fell into that, oh, they told me what I wanted to hear. This is what you're in now. This is what you're in now. So this is what you need to know to be successful. It's not just the coding. It's the communication. It's the stress management. It's the public speaking. Those three things. If you can start working on those things as well, oh, there is no limit to what you could do. Right? No limit. I'm just saying. So that's my advice anyway, guys. It's a lot. And, and, and these are the things that these are the extra things that they don't say, that they don't ever really talk about. But it's all important. Learning every single part of medical coding down to the medical terminology and the anatomy and pathophysiology. And then learning all of these other things about communication and stress management and public speaking. These are all things that are key to making successful coders in my opinion anyway this is my advice anyway so i'm gonna wrap this one up thank you guys so much for joining me if this video helped you please give it a like subscribe and share and i will see you next time bye